Hi everybody, welcome to Wool and Wine episode 47. I'm Tammy. I'm Claudia. And I'm Janet. And welcome back to all our viewers. And I think we're going to be talking a little bit about Rhinebeck today. Yes. <laughs> And we're recording here just south of Dayton, Ohio, in Bellbrook, and it is the 28th of October, so we're yeah. right here at Halloween. And it's getting, yeah, okay, so I did my, my, here you go. I got pumpkin earrings. Oh, <laughs> and I wore an orange sweater. <laughs> and she's so festive for the Halloween season. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Right. So, so uh, where, do, where do we want to start? We were at Rhinebeck. We yeah. <laughs> well, we, we went to a couple th places up there. It was a great trip. It was. So yeah. you would have already seen us getting ready and the drive along the way. Yeah. And the different states that we went through to get there. Uh, yeah. Um, think, what is it, like a 12-hour drive? Something um, like that, 11? About 11, I think. Yeah. yeah. In the first day, we stopped at a hotel. and um, In Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. So last year, we didn't know about Pick Up Every Stitch, the On the Road to Rhinebeck. Um, but we knew about it since we had somebody tell us last year. So we actually planned our trip to go... Um, like a more southern route, uh -huh. so we didn't have to cut so far south to get there, and right, and it worked so, out so well. Right, and so it was really fun. So we got to pick up every stitch and got to meet several wonderful people. And yeah, watch their podcasts. Yeah, that's always fun. It is. Yeah, yeah so much fun. A lot but, of really fun people. Yeah, I was surprised though. Last year we saw more podcasters there when we were there but I think some of them showed up after we left well right I know that Kevin and Ray from Needles at the Ready and mm -hmm. then the girls from the Knitting Posse they had all gone to lunch and weren't there yet but there were just oh, you know Kelly and Noel were there oh, and right. that was so good yeah and, and several yeah. others um you know, if we start listing names, we're going to forget people. Yeah, so we're not going to do that. <laughs> if we saw you, no, we were like over the moon excited and uh -huh. a little overwhelmed. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's overwhelming. It's like yarn fumes and all the people. <laughs> okay, yeah. we wore yarn high. Yeah, we, we were, were on a yarn high. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, we were. But yes. it was so wonderful. Okay, and so then, wonderful. And, and then, then we went. Then we, so we had Melissa and Terry, our two friends, went with us that we knit with. Um, and um, they, we went to Cake Palooza the next day. We had the 10 o'clock slot for Cake Palooza. And that was just really fun, too. It was. Oh, my gosh. So really um, we saw a lot of people there and... A lot of beautiful yarns and oh, yeah. just yeah. all kinds oh, of things. Yeah. So fun. There'll yeah. be a lot of pictures at the end of all the people uh -huh. that we saw. Um, Alicia did like the most amazing job putting this thing together again. And I finally got to meet, well, we got to meet her this time. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not a huge show, but it was just, it was really right sized for a couple hours. Yeah. And right. It was, it was really fun. It was. Yeah, there's there was, only so many people they let you in during yeah. the time slot. And then once your time's up, it's time you're to pretty go. much ready to go anyway. Yeah, right. So, right. Um, it yeah. was about, it was like almost perfect. The weather was oh my gosh, amazing. Oh, it was it gorgeous, was. sunshiny. Oh, yeah. And I have a layout. So they handed out the... Um, a little map of, uh, yeah. of what... It, where all the booths were and right um so, so. I, i'll take a picture of that and insert that somewhere you'll be able mm -hmm. to see that but it got so there are these gorgeous big shady trees mm -hmm. along this long aisle way i guess booths on both sides 
And the people who were working those booths were freezing because they had no sunshine or very mm. dappled sunshine. And it was chilly, but man, that sun was toasty warm. It, it was, was just it was like beautiful. perfect sweater weather. Yeah. You know? It was. Yeah. It was really nice. <laughs> so, like, so good. Yeah. yeah. All of our sweaters that we wore just worked out perfectly. They yeah. did. They did, yeah. fortunately. Yeah. So then Saturday and Sunday, we were at the New York Sheep and Wool Festival. Yeah, better known as Ryan Back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got bags. We did get bags. So yes, we did. Let's see. And really cute. Tammy's also going to put a picture of of what the program looks like, which has the logo of the bag on it. Right. Oh, well, you guys have a bag. So and then there. we have these. Yeah. yeah. That we They're can, great bags. They I'll are. Because yeah. I keep using the one from last year. And, you know, I had to bring two of them today because <laughs> I had too much stuff last year and this year. So. Are you talking about knitting? Yeah. Can there <laughs> ever be too much? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> you can uh, never have enough knitting. Well, I just couldn't fit it all in one bag. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Like oh. Yeah, and again, the weather was fabulous both days. Oh my gosh, yeah. We got there like at 9 o'clock on Saturday morning and maybe 9.15. I think we left at 9 o'clock and we really weren't very far away. So that whole... No, no we were at 30. We were there, there when they with, opened yeah. the floodgates. Yeah. And it really yes. wasn't that bad. Some uh -uh. We'd heard other podcasters say, don't show up like right at 9 o'clock because it's just a madhouse with so many people trying to get in. But honestly, it wasn't. Um, we parked super close and got straight in. And then we took her, we, we had to figure out where to get our bags because we had pre-ordered. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, if you didn't get a bag and you want one last year, if you recall, we didn't know to order it in advance and they weren't available. But a few months later, we looked on the website and they were available. So they had restocked them because people want those bags, you know. And, yeah, they and were that was popular so this year. Oh, they're so adorable. So yeah. popular. Yeah. yeah. So we knew to buy them ahead. And uh, actually, I think when Melissa and I were in Germany on our vacation. I sent you a message. She, yep. I and, sent you guys a message. And she phone. went out and bought five of them, for one for each of mm -hmm. the five of us who were going together. And... Uh, that worked out really well too. So, mm -hmm. you know, we just all got in line together. And even in that line, we saw so many amazing, yeah. wonderful people. And I think we got some photos yeah. with people up there. And um, yeah, that so day fun. we wore our pressed we flowers. Yeah. Sweaters all and five of us. Again. And so a lot of people noticed that. Yeah. So. Uh, it, yeah. Was, it was so fun. There was a lot of pressed flowers. Mm -hmm. um, sweaters or cardigans or shawls or vests or yeah all those popular, all the things yeah. yeah that and the framed yeah the frame by that Andrea was Mallory yes yeah. very popular that was the big popular and most I, popular sweater I made one and I took it with me and it was on the dresser in my bedroom in the Airbnb and I walked out and forgot it <laughs> so we intended to leave and tailgate and have our lunch and then get in the car and go back to the Airbnb when we were done on the hill anyway. So I wasn't going to stand in that chaos and make these guys wait just, you know, to mm -hmm. stand in all that. So it wasn't really a big deal. And I totally could have worn it the next day, but I didn't. So I brought it, I took it and I brought it back with me. So it's going to have its debut. debut some other time when we're all hanging out together. <laughs> Right. Yeah. So, should we talk about what really we're wearing? Really great time. As or no? Oh, First of all, uh, we forgot that. We got all excited about right back. I know. Yes. We forgot about the wine. Cheers to everyone. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. I hope you have something good to drink. Mmm. Mm. Well, that's yummy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very good. We'll talk about that delicious wine at the end. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, That's for sure. Really good. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. so, do you want to talk about what you're wearing? I can do that. So, 
Here's the video. And I am wearing the Sunshine Coast by Heidi Kermeyer. And the yarn I used was a Cotlana, and the colorway is, I always hate it when they give you numbers, but it's 02518. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so I knit the large, and you know, I really like this pattern. I've actually thought about making it again because I like the details, and I don't know if you saw them in the video, but I mean, I like the side, the way they did that, and the dots the white on the raglan side. Too. And that the white really raglan. Yeah. You know, so it's just, you know, just an interesting sweater. And I was telling these guys, I'm not really fond of this yarn, and I'm not sure why, but I mean, it's, it's fine. It's got drape, it's, it's fine, but I'm not in love with it. Yeah. <laughs> Yours has a lot better stitch definition than the one that I made. Mine was an alpaca. And it did not, you couldn't see all the beautiful details yeah. on the side and yeah. the little holes that has the in little there. Yarn 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 yeah. And you just couldn't see those. So, yeah, I've really even dark. thought about making another one too. Yeah, very dark fabric. Uh huh. A purple. Yeah. One of my favorites. <laughs> yes. Somebody there saw, saw Janet and she goes, I know you. You like purple. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. You yes. Do. Yeah. But it, yeah. I, w I really wouldn't mind making another one. And even long sleeve. It's, yeah. It's comfortable. It's nice. It's A line. It's, it's just, it's, it's very flattering. Yeah, yeah. It's an interesting pattern. And I think mm -hmm. it's kind of um, timeless, really. Oh, yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah. I'd probably do it out of wool, something wool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> totally, you could do mm -hmm. that. Yeah, that'd be yeah. easy. All oh, right. Did you make modifications or I do you remember? I did not. No? I did not. No, and I made this back in, I looked it up, I made this back in 21. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, yeah. it's been a while. It has been a while, and I I think I saw, I made some notes when I was, when I was uh, making this, and it said, I started with a six, and then I decided I, I thought it was too tight. It might be too tight, so I went up to a seven, and then I went back down to a six later. So When it started doing the A-line. Yeah, yeah but you, you can't know, when see I looked at this, stitches. and you can't really tell much. No. So, no. Yeah. I just changed needles on something I'm working on, too. Yeah. I went from an eight to a nine, and you, that's, there's a pretty drastic difference uh -huh. in needle size there. But I mean, you when still you look at tell. it, you can't tell. Right. No. Yeah. It's pretty easy. So, Miss Janet, what do you have on? Well, I have on the Cumulus Blouse by Petite Knit. And, and here's the video. And here's a little bit of a close-up. Such beautiful fabric. And this, I finished, this was a finish on the last episode, and I just love it. This is a perfect time of year uh -huh. to wear this, and I just am loving wearing it. So I decided I'm wearing it today. <laughs> Good, yeah. It looks great on you. And the yarns that I use for this is the Frankie Gray Fibers, which is, here's the label. So this is a yarn from the Grocery Girls. And this is Jody, Jody from the Grocery Girls. Her and her daughter own a shop. And Here's the label. So it is 65% baby Surrey alpaca and 35% silk. So when I first when I first put this in Ravelry, they also make it in the colorways Barbie Girl too, by the way. 
they they made a um, mohair also in the same exact color and so I had that all confused in my <laughs> Ravelry as actual mohair when in reality it is not and it is the Surrey alpaca so um, anyway so I've been confused on that I think the whole time I made this even though I knew um, Tammy said this is Surrey alpaca so it's really nice. I mean, I can't really tell much a difference between this and uh, um, a mohair, but it is, it's just, it's wonderful. And I really like That's it a lot. Gorgeous. Did you, do you um, think it's softer? Because sometimes uh, oh, mohair can, can be something. a little bit prickly, scratchy a little yeah, bit. Yes, sometimes. I agree. I agree. And I don't think it, it comes out like, you know, like, you mm -hmm. know, you get a lot of, like fluff on your fluff pants. Fluff all over from right because you don't have um, anything on your black jeans. hair. Yeah. Whereas a surrey just kind of stays, and there's still a little halo, but it's not quite as much as a mohair. But so, it's fluffy. It looks beautiful. Yeah. So yeah, and then I held that with the um, Knit Picks Hawthorne fingering in the colorway Rose City, and I don't have the the label for that, but. Um, we're all a little more familiar with the knit picks oh, gosh. yarns. I yeah. think I, I've been showing it, but um, yeah. So the two of those colors just went really well together. Uh -huh. And I made the size 40, I think it was. Yeah. So that's pretty good. And it just turned out like perfection. just really well. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm really happy with it. And I'd highly recommend the pattern and the yarn. Yeah. That's a good combination. It Those is. just it's look gorgeous. really good together. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's like a great like everyday sweater. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the kind of things just, I like. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like it's a little cool. I'm gonna put that one on. So Yeah. It's been my go to ever since I made it. And then it. you can make a little thing, a cowl or something. So when you're if it's cold out, right. you can take care of your neck. <laughs> Yeah, there I wore mine yesterday. <laughs> one of my recent ones. That cumulus blouse is so nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'll have yours done soon. Hopefully. Soon <laughs> after I get one of my other ones finished. <laughs> kind of reminds me of the DRK everyday sweater where it's like one of those. You yeah, just want right. to wear every day. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, love it. All right. So what are you wearing, Tammy? So I am wearing the Cinnamon and Bourbon by Thea Coleman. And here's the video. So this was a test knit and I had it finished on our last podcast, but it took a couple of days to edit the podcast and in the meantime, between us recording and getting it edited and up, Thea released the pattern for Rhinebeck. So if I had known it was coming out, I could have shown this two and a half weeks ago. <laughs> Darn it. So anyway, she released this for Rhinebeck and I actually got to meet her there on Sunday. And so it was interesting because every place we went, someone had it, had, had tested it for her and had it hanging there. Uh -huh. So when we were at Pick Up Every Stitch, they had it. And I don't know if it was Karen or Felicia who did the test net, but it was one of those up, mm -hmm. on, the, up on, on the top as one of their samples. And I actually thought that um, Thea was going to be there, but she had already gone to Rhinebeck. I'd um, emailed her or DM'd her on Instagram or something and so I wore it that day because I was so excited about getting to wear it uh -huh. but I love it it has such I, I just think it's so interesting the way she did this and I love those little scallops on the shoulder it's very drop shoulder um, I did the size 44 in this and the yarn I used the black is leftover from oh oh I know what it is it's one that Drama my Drama, Drama. sweater yeah um, so this is actually this is a DK weight pattern but I knit it in sport weight yarn because I was able to get gauge with the fiber company Aaron Moore Light 
in the color Malin Head and it is so incredibly soft. And then the stripes and the little, I think they look like frosting blips. Mm -hmm. um, that is Prime Alpaca in natural colorway. So I wore this on Friday and then I wore it again on Sunday and it was hot on Sunday inside. I had a turtleneck under it because it was cold when we started out. And then I got like stinky, sweaty hot. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, wool, if you hang it or lay it out, it usually, it's antimicrobial by nature. And so it doesn't really hold a smell. I felt like it smelled, so I blocked it again. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, you're hauling a bag around and shopping and getting all excited talking to people. And then I had that, like, nylon turtleneck underneath of it that I think was really making me perspire. <laughs> so um, when I blocked it this time, I noticed the water was really, really dark. And I don't notice that the sweater looks like it faded any, mm -mm. but I do notice that what was a natural color alpaca now has sort of a light gray sheen to it. And I don't know if you can even pick that up. I but can't tell. No, I can't. I can't. I'm sitting here and I can't you tell. You can't tell. Yeah, it's not really a pretty. It is. I, it is I a love beautiful it. Sweater. I mean, it's, beautiful pattern. it's mm -hmm. so good. And I actually have yarn to do another one because that's how much I like it. <laughs> yeah, it's a beautiful pattern. It's so pretty. Yeah. Very inspiring. I think now, we I want to make it too. And I want to make it. Yeah. <laughs> and I have yarn for it. Yeah. I think you probably do too. I think we should all, oh. you know, do another one. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be down for a knit along if anybody's up for it. Or you just do it at your own pace. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we haven't finished the one knit along yet. So. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> right? That's I have true. a ways to go yet on my letho. <laughs> yeah. So, I know you said you don't have a finish. No finish. But you no. do. I have a finish. Okay. Yes. And so... You've seen this, been seeing it for a while, and I got it all finished, and I wore it on Friday at uh, Cake Palooza, and here it is. Oh, it's so my gorgeous. Anjou. Oh, and here's the video. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the Anju by Skaney Dippin. And I actually made a size 50, but I didn't do an 18 gauge. I did a 20 gauge. Because I like these these colors and so I did a swatch and I liked the um I like the gauge of the 20 because these, well, this is, the yarn I used was oh, a it knit pick. Yeah, it's a sport weight. And this is Paragon uh, in the colorway Topiary. And then the darker color is um, Utopia Helix DK. And I got that last year at Rhinebeck and that's the only, <laughs> only yarn I've used since last year. So, oh, wow. Yeah. Well, there you go. There so I go. You used some yarn. I used some yarn Woo. from last year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got a long way to go. <laughs> yeah. It's but, okay. Yeah. It's not a race. No, it's not. But I really love it. And yeah. it just feels good. And it's soft. And yeah. Yeah, so one of our viewers that was on at Cake Palooza uh -huh. said, Oh my gosh, Claudia, I love your sweater without... She oh, had ripped yeah. back and took out the lighter color. Right, down here at the bottom. And she said it, it looks so much better without that in it now. Yeah, and, yeah I agree. Um, I, I agree also. Yeah, yeah so it was a good thing. move to do that. Yeah. yeah, it took me some time because I had to redo all of this. If I really thought about it, I just like... I guess I could have um, cut off this. The ribbing. Yeah, and then a Kitchener, but I didn't. So, anyway, it is what it is. So, that put me behind on all my other stuff. <laughs> right. But I do. It, it, was, it was worth it, and 
it's a fun pattern. Yeah. It really is. I never got really bored with it. I don't know why this, so we've talked about the pressed flowers and Tammy thought it was a lot of fun. Oh, I loved it. Every and stitch. I did not, but I love this. So mm -hmm. it's just kind of funny how, you know, we're, we're so different sometimes. Right, right. But, well, all slip stitch patterns are not created the same. That is true. There you go. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. and it is all slip stitch. So, yeah. So love there it. we go. Love it. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so I have got one that I want to show. So this is the Friend to Friend by Leslie Friend. And I tried it on, so here's a video. It's not for me. I am making these for all my girls, my daughters and daughter-in-laws. I just think it is such a wonderful pattern. So here it is up close. The color, oh, the yarn, most important, is Two of Wands, Q and Me, and the colorway is Peacoat, and it's just this really nice dark marled blue. And I just love this pattern. So I did make a couple of modifications and one of them is I knit the ribbing a little bit longer than the pattern calls for. I didn't make it actually longer. Um, I just started the decreases at a little sooner after the ribbing. So, you know, it tells you to knit X from the bottom. I think this is a paid for pattern. I want to say it's like $5 or something. I think that's what it is. Mm -hmm. I could be lying. It might be free. I think it's $5 though. Anyway, I think that the um, shaping on it is really beautiful and well thought out. And I had made one and had the girls try it on kind of as a sample. And the reason I went a little bit longer with the ribbing is it kept flipping up. And I don't know if it was because it was a little bit tighter on them. So I cast on, I did the same size, but my girls are all pretty darn close to the same size. They're pretty busty and they're all built very similarly and even my daughter-in-law. And so I just, for this version, whatever she said in the pattern that's two by two ribbing at the bottom i cast on i think either four or eight extra stitches and divided those evenly between the front and the back but this is just it is such a wonderful gift knit i think it took me about two days and with adding those extra stitches it takes like two and a bit of a third skein to finish it um, I also, one of the girls said, well, I don't know if I want the collar that high. I feel like it's like touching my neck because I think it actually um, has like a, almost like a turtleneck, but it's mm -hmm. nice and wide. You mm -hmm. can see that it's, you know, it doesn't fit right up to you. So I shortened that part a little bit. So I lengthened it at the bottom and shortened it at the neck and they're all real happy with that. So that's cool. Yeah. So yeah, I you don't have to worry about making sleeves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. No, no sleeve island for you. Yeah. Right. And, you know, even if you don't have sweaters, this is so cute, like uh -huh. over a jean jacket. Uh -huh. And with that collar being short, you can kind of pop the collar, uh -huh. have it sticking out. Uh -huh. I just think that would be adorable. Anyway, I've got more to make on that. So, all right. So um, the next finish I have is my Letho. And this is Letho number two, and the girls are both working on there, so we'll kind of show them intermingled. Um, this is the Letho by Natasha Hornsby. Hornby, no S in there. And here's the video of me wearing it. And the last time I showed this, I had 
a near disaster. Oh, right. Um, this is the front. And I had come back from vacation, thought that I had finished the short rows, and went ahead and did the back, sewed it together, picked up all around for the welts, had the welts completely finished along with this color work, and realized that my fronts were not the same depth. So I picked up stitches on a row apart, right behind the um, color work, snipped a stitch, picked the row out. I actually, I counted first to see what the short rows needed to be, like how many stitches I needed mm. for that. Went exactly that far, knit all the short rows, kitchenered it back together, and you can't tell which. Oh, I was so happy it worked. Yeah, <laughs> no doubt. Um, Last thing you want to be doing is taking all those welts out. No, the welts are a challenge. I mean, they're you know, there's a lot to get those in there. I shouldn't say a challenge. They just take a little they bit. They take of time. time. It's some number mm -hmm. of rows, you know, and then you're picking up and knitting it with the stitch mm -hmm. several rows below. Um, but I love this. I am so thrilled with it. I'm not going to say I'm going to make another one, but I'm also not going to say this is my last one. <laughs> it's really easy to wear. So the yarn I used was the Blar, and I didn't bring it with me because I've shown you a couple of times already. Um, so if you really want to see those yarns, just go back to episode 46 because we all had our yarns for it at that mm -hmm. time. Um, it's the Blarney Woolen Mills Donegal Tweed, and that's the one that, remember, I said that you could go on the Blarney Woolen Mills website and buy, I think it's a 12-pack, right? Something like that, 12 It's or either 10, 10 or 12 pack yeah. for $99. I mean, it was like ridiculously inexpensive Real, yeah. for what you get, um, but it's the Donegal Tweed, and this color is 4811 gray, but you can see all the colors that are in that. And then the cream color here that I used on the welts and the, the little blips is um, Peace Fleece Worsted in Antarctic White. And then the gold is a skein that I bought from Claudia to put down the back and on the welts, on the sleeves and so forth. And that is Tacky Yarns Donegal Tweed and again, it's a color 1BC0806, which I would just say is gold, except again, look at all of the colors that are in that gold. It's just all oranges and greens and flecks of beautiful colors. It, mm -hmm. oh, really good. Mm -hmm. um, that's such a beautiful sweater. It, it is. is. It is. I just hope mine is going to look as beautiful as yours. It, it is. Will. It absolutely will. I mean, I'm telling you, blocking makes a world of difference in anything. And for this, you know, a good soak in hot water. I was worried that that wool was going to be too itchy because, you know, it's it's kind of... It's a... It's, it's a coarse kind mm -hmm. of a, you know, I would just call it a real rustic yarn. Mm -hmm. But once it's blocked, this is really soft. So, you know, we, you were asking the other day mm -hmm. about how soft it is. Yeah. And I mm -hmm. think you could probably wear that next to skin. Yeah, I think you could. I think that would be mm -hmm. really good. I mean, I plan on wearing it for a jacket. Yeah. Because no. it's just so yeah. good over top of something. So, anyway, do you want to talk about yours now? And then... Uh, sure people on the knit along who are working on these and have finished and just working their way along oh my gosh they're so there's so many mm -hmm. beautiful, beautiful ones. Ones. yes yes absolutely yeah um our next episode i'm going to reach out or one of us can reach out and ask them if they care if we show a finished photo because they're posting those and they look so beautiful in them. Uh -huh. but we need your permission before yeah we're we not do just going to do it without asking yeah before, so, so um yeah, so right. just know that that's coming. We'll, we'll be reaching out. Okay, so I've made some progress. When we were at, uh, at uh, Ryan Beck and driving up, this is what I knitted on most of the time, and so <laughs> that's why I've made some progress. That's the bottom. <laughs> okay, there we go. 
Wow. Oh my goodness. Look how There's the back. Ready. And this yarn, I swear, it's that tacky. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful blips of color. And so this is the Donegal tweed you guys use for your first the Studio one. Donegal. Studio Donegal, Donegal is the gray. Oh, so you have used more yarn from Rhinebeck last year. Oh, yes, okay. <laughs> You're right. Now you can feel even better about and well, it. And I've sold some from Rhinebeck from last That's year. That's right. So too. Mrs. Terry used the rest of it, yeah. didn't she? Yes, so, <laughs> yes, the gray is the um, Studio Donegal, soft Donegal, in the color. I just said gray because it's gray dark gray it's the dark gray <laughs> right because they do have a light gray yeah and the light green welt is the gielsk tweed in color weight 82 <laughs> and the white is um fiber company amble and white heather and the main color is tacky yarns donegal tweed in colorway a uh, redwood and yeah, I've tried it on. I have modified it slightly because the sizing was, I think, went from 46 up to 51 or something like that. And I didn't want a 51. And I wanted to make sure it had enough... Um, like room for sweaters. Sweaters yeah. underneath it. Yeah. So what I did, so I added uh, two rows before I... Let's see, before I did the sleeve, I added two, no, when I was going up and down, that's right, I did two. So in the front and back, I you got added two, two rows yeah. on the front and, and two, two rows, rows on, on the two rows on the back, and that's on both sides. And then when I was getting ready on the back, I actually added four rows on both sides. After you do the shaping for the mm -hmm. neckline, then I did added four rows on each side so it's it's got enough enough room and then on the front i had i actually i added two more rows i probably didn't really need to but i did mm -hmm. so it's gonna be so beautiful yeah it, it's and i did i i i added a second row because between the she's yeah. talking about between the blips and the welts. Between the blips, there was really only supposed to be one row, but I did two just because I like the spacing of it a little bit better. Yeah, I and may I did have done that on the thing. I did that on the, yep. the sleeve as well. So I yep. think that's all I've done. But next time it will be a finish because right. I'm ready. It's that time of year, yeah, and I think it's so close. Oh my gosh! Oh so you have goodness. one more well. Oh, you have you finish have, your white yes. well, yeah. and then one more green well, uh -huh. and then the bottom uh -huh. ribbing, uh -huh. and then the neckline brioche. Uh -huh. <gasps> Sweet. Yeah, girl. Yeah, you'll be wearing that by next episode. Yeah, for sure. So I'm excited about it, and you know, you look at it and you. Just, before you make, you make it, it was we were looking at the pattern and we're like, oh, this seems really complicated, but it's really not. No. I thought it was way easier than I ever thought. Yeah. It's just such a different construction because you're working from the cuffs towards the middle. And there are so many things that you learn along the way. Yeah. And but the, it's like eating an elephant. You eat it one bite at a time. Yeah, exactly. And it was so, it was really not difficult. Yeah. The brioche was a, it took me, I guess, I had to rip it out like four times the first yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> well, doing in the round, that transition between uh -huh. the pearl round yes. and the knit round. That at, was, yeah. At the beginning of round, it, it took a hot second to figure out where the yarn has to be when you're... Mm -hmm. Between a, the two. Yeah, yeah, putting a collar on one and coming around in the right spot to yeah. pick up the, you know, knit mm -hmm. two together or purl two together on the next one. Yeah. yeah. And I think... So my experience hasn't been on, like, it's really simple. <laughs> it's, well, it's not simple, but it's I mean, not it's hard. not difficult, but um, <clears throat> I had quite a bit of problems. <laughs> <Did mine. laughs> You just had a little challenge getting your head yeah it was just one little one in the round i did um so just to give you a look 
So last episode I showed you I had my one sleeve completed, one sleeve and one half. So that's how you work it. So that was the back part. But anyway, so my brioche, I had, you know, I had to rip it out a couple times, but I didn't have a big problem with the brioche on the first sleeve. So then, you know, you do all this knitting, and so then you don't brioche, and you forget what you're doing. Or at least I did. So then I got to the next sleeve, and I did my brioche, and it did not look good. And I'm like, I... I know what I'm doing, like, hello. So then I ripped that all out. I started again, did it again, and the brioche still did not look good. And then I was just like, you know, then I started a little, so um, so anyway, I, I messed <laughs> with it. But, you know, if I would have been smart, I would have like, I don't know, went to YouTube or something. But anyway, so then Claudia helped me. She showed me what I was doing wrong. So when I was doing the knit row, you're always supposed to pull the yarn in front before you slip the next stitch. And that's what I wasn't doing wrong. So Claudia helped me get my brioche. I had my other old cuff on here. So then Tammy, she did the Kitchener stitch. And she had to do it way up here in the welt because of, of how I did my, um, I had it all brioche pretty much to the top and you do an increase and then <laughs> you start the welt and it was like, it was a mess. So anyway, Tammy, we we Tammy Kitchener, the new cuff on. We're going to call her Tammy oh. Kitchener. Oh, no, but here's the thing. I was feeling so brave after cutting up the front of mine and mm -hmm. it worked. I'm like, mm -hmm. Psh, we got this. <laughs> Let's just cut it off and pick up stitches and Kitchener it back on. And I was shocked when it worked so well. Yeah. It so looks great. I, it's just awesome. So now I'm on the second, second sleeve. Oh, so God. I've got a little ways to go, but now I, now I'm moving right along again and I know how to do this brioche. So when I start the brioche in the front and the hem, I will know what I'm doing this time. Right. So um, oh, I will except, not be forgetting. Except that one's flat and you're always only knitting. <laughs> oh, is it? Oh, yeah. I guess that's probably true, right? Oh, boy. Okay. So maybe I won't know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, you will. It'll be so much easier. And that'll be but, easy. Yeah. There's this, no transition. It's just been a little more of a little bit more challenging for me. <laughs> it was just different. Like... You know what, though? It takes a village sometimes <laughs> to knit a sweater. <laughs> right? Sometimes and, it and does. And you've got people, so it's all And it good. took a village this time yeah. for me. But you know what? So if far. you hadn't have had that issue, you wouldn't have been, you would have been like, yeah, this isn't bad. Right. It was just that one, one tiny little uh, yeah. thing. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. Yeah, that was just a block that yeah. I just could not get right. Yeah, because yeah, it made your, didn't you make it get your stitches go angled? Yeah, time? and they, they twisted a little. It was, it was a little bit of an issue. So anyway, the yarn that I'm using is the Studio Donegal Donegal Tweed. That we all got at Ryan Beck last year. From and Adirondack Yarns. Yarns. Adirondack Yarns, yes. And they had some this year. Mm -hmm. And they had the same they had the model wearing the, yep. um, the sweater. That was so brilliant. And yeah, that it was. was so brilliant. It was. Yeah. Yes. So nice. And mine was the gray, blue, and purple. And they all have numbers, but... <laughs> She's got light gray. Like right, a light gray. gray. I have dark, dark gray. gray. Yeah. yeah, right. So I'm really I'm looking forward if if mine's half as nice as Tammy's and Claudia's and it's going to be it will be. I will be so tickled with this when it's done. It's going to be perfection. You're so going to love it. I just know you will. Yeah. I'm excited to get mine done so I can wear it cuz it's that see that time of year which perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 All right, yes. so we are on to more whips. Um, all right, so I have a couple. I want to get to the right one. 
So I worked on a shawl. Did I get it? Yeah, I grabbed the right bag. Okay, so um, I had been working on a shawl that I showed you last time. It's the Marlowe by Tammy Gore. And I worked on this quite a bit. I guess I could get my yarn out. I might even have tags for a couple. Nope, I don't. I only have tags for one of them. Anyway, so this one is living in a project bag that um, I made, I don't know, a couple, three something years ago. And we're continuing to make those. That is gorgeous. It is really turning out so yeah, yeah, yeah. nice. I love your color choices. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I wanted something really neutral. It's getting like way so big that it doesn't even um, fit on screen anymore. Can you me oh, hold this wow, side? look, it is. Okay, so I want to hold it up a little bit higher. Oh, look at that. Um, yeah. This bottom part right here is going to be the front corner. I was like super perplexed about how this all was um, going to come together. Gosh, the colors look so good on screen. They do. Mm -hmm. um, but I couldn't figure out how it was going to get shaped because, you know, you start out, it's got this gorgeous center decrease that you can see, which is making this beautiful V down the front of it. And then I'm like, okay, but it's got this point on one side. How do you ever get there? Well, I know now. So it's a paid for pattern, so I can't tell you, but you can see that the center spine is moving closer to this side and further away from this side. So the yarns I'm using, this is fingering weight, and I just wanted a shawl that I could wear with jeans and a jean jacket and practically any colored shirt, and it was gonna be grand. So I am using Lang Yarns Bebe and this black colorway. And this is fingering weight, 100% merino. It's very springy. I don't know if you can see that, but it's really lovely to work with. Um, this one is Sweet Tea Yarns Sweet Sock and the colorway is Rusty Watering Can. And then this one, I think we figured out that this is Shandy's um, Expression Fiber Expression Arts. Fiber Arts um, Cash Merino something. And I think the colorway is denim or something similar to that. But man, I love this is like, oh, so soft. I used it in something else recently and the label came off, so that's why I'm only able to guess. <laughs> but anyway, it's these three colors and they're like so good together. Loving it. I'm not making any modifications. It's fabulous just the way it is. Um, the needle size is, so oh, it's a US 6. And I'm just working away on it. It's one of those that I can pick up when I want to watch television or when there are people to talk to and your other projects might take a little bit of brain space. <laughs> so yeah, I'm really happy with that. I'm glad to be working on it. Good. Yeah. You want me to go? Sure. Okay, the cumulus blouse. <laughs> oh my good one. gosh. It, oh, wow. And I, like I said, I've been mostly working on, on my letho, so this hasn't gotten a lot of love lately. But it's, it's getting close. And, okay, so I am using the Frankie Gray Fibers in the colorway Peach and Pearl Soho Linen Quill and Red Poppy. And I'm holding those two together and that's the, how it's looking. And man, do I, it's just, I love it. So here, I guess I should hold these up so you guys can see what they look like by themselves. You know, and I'm like kind of going, wow, I never would have thought that would have looked that good together, but it really does. So, 
Yeah, it does. Yeah, the only issue, and I think I mentioned that last time because I put it on and the, I think the, it's a little too deep for me. I might have to just put on a little bit of a uh, rib. rib. So then I have to decide, am I gonna put the rib on the, the bottom and the sleeve? Huh, I don't know, I'll surprise you because I don't yeah. know yet. I just kind of feel like if I put it around the neckline that I probably should have a little bit. It doesn't have to be long, right? Maybe a, an inch or so. So anyway, that's where I am. I think you should do the neckline before you do the sleeves. Yeah, I will. You know, just yeah. to see where they're hanging because well, that might pull it in a little bit. And I will probably do the neck before I do is around the bottom so I can decide what yeah. I really want to do there. So. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. That is so pretty. Yeah, I love it. I love it. This yarn is really nice, mm -hmm. too. You're it really welcome. is. Mm -hmm. you, yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> She's so nice. It was our birthday present. It was our birthday present. Yeah. You guys, mm -hmm. you were so nice. Yep. So my next whip that I have... <clears throat> is Tapern by Joan Forgione. Yeah. Ooh, you're making progress on that girl. Right. <laughs> Beautiful. Yes. Here's what I have done so far. Oh, wow. So I've separated for the sleeves, got all the color work done. So I'm on just the main color now. Oh, here, let me just show you this way. Beautiful. Gosh, that Beautiful. looks so good. So, this was another one of these classics where I was, I went up a needle size for the color work and I knit almost all the color work and the thing was absolutely huge. <laughs> I tried to talk her into giving it to me and finish it. <laughs> Sorry. And so everybody's like, oh, it's too, well, it was too big for you, Claudia. It was too big for everybody. It was big. So needless to say, I had to rip it all the way back out. So I went down a needle size. I thought I went down a size, but I did not. So this is still the 42 and a half size. Which is and I'm not ripping it down anymore. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> it's so pretty. But it's fitting so much more better than it was before. It actually fits. So I do love this. And, you know, it's just another small setback in my knitting. <laughs> <laughs> it's only knitting. <laughs> only knitting. That's right. It's only knitting. And so I always got to tell myself that. And then I want to make it right. So, you know, there's little setbacks along the way. And Gorgeous. just keep moving forward. And so that's what I'm doing. And I'm I'm making progress. I'm, I'm ha much more happier with mm -hmm. The way my color work looks on this one, because the other one was tighter in the stitches, and this one's looking much better. So, I am making progress. Have you blocked that? I did a steam. Yeah, because it looks so beautiful, beautiful. and flat. I, yeah. I did steam it a little bit. Mm -hmm. so, I love the color. And it does, it's acceptable now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's acceptable and I'm knitting forward and oh, I think it's all is much beauty. better <laughs> it looks gorgeous so um, the yarns I'm using on this is the Cascade Heathers um, 220 Cascade 220 Heathers and just a Cascade 220 so um, the Heathers 220 is the Pacific color which is the very dark um, green color and then the Cascade 220 is the aqua which is the light light green color beautiful that is so gorgeous. love working with the Cascade 220 it's a non super wash and it's just a wonderful yarn to work with over and over <laughs> on this particular sweater. <laughs> Thank God it's so a good workhorse. You can rip it out and re-knit it and it's still perfect. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. 
<laughs> so I'm enjoying now just being able to sit back and knit and enjoy the fact that it's going to fit nice. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. That's so that. you don't have modifications for that, I assume, since you're only... Just well, I'm taking it. I did decrease a little bit in the body. Okay. After the sleeve separation, so that's the only thing that I'm I'm doing. That's a modification. All right. Well, I my next whip is the Viridian, and it's a cardigan by Rebecca Clo, and it's from Pom Pom issue 47. So that's winter of 23. And I'm doing the size 41. Just getting the yarn out here so I can show you. And again, this one is in Cascade Yarns. So one of the yarns I'm using is Cascade 220, which again, like Janet said, is non-superwash merino worsted weight. And um, this colorway is camel. So it is classic camel color. And then the other one is Cascade Yarns BFL in the Ecru colorway. And it is just like, I would say, undyed, yeah. like naturally undyed. Mm -hmm. um, so here is the cardigan. Mm, that's pretty. It pretty. really, you can see, so this sleeve is unblocked but finished and I did block the sweater but look how those stitches open up I would say this is a slip stitch broken rib so here's what the inside looks like so you can see where I'm saying the slip stitches are the um, camel color every row is knit pearl rib and the ecru color every row is a knit slip so you're slipping your pearls and knitting your knits um the pattern is what's paid for it's not that um the slip stitch or the broken rib with that that's that's been out there for since knitting has been around um so it's going to have as you saw in the picture it'll have a button band and i'm going to do that in the camel color as well and check this out. I bought some buttons at Rhinebeck. I'll just fold it and show you on the back so you can see how they'll look up against it. Got these buttons. Look how perfect those are for this. And these are from Lisa Peters Art. They're handmade buttons and beads fish leather. I don't know what fish leather is, but um, they had, their entire booth is handmade buttons. And I think they're ceramic, right? Yeah. So why Tammy's on the subject, <laughs> I also bought buttons from Lisa Peters Art as well. And I got these round buttons. Didn't well, even realize. So she, they can see the pattern on them because that's beautiful. Yeah, mm -hmm. there it is. Look how pretty. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, they were quite the couple. It was Lisa and her husband, Hank, and um, we had a great time looking at the buttons and buying the buttons. Were we the only two that got them? Or did Melissa and Terry? Terry might have bought some too, didn't she? No, no. she was looking at them, but she, she didn't she find didn't the right ones. Find the right ones. But I'm really excited. Um, I've got the second sleeve started. Look how tiny they look. This is how the whole sweater looked when I... I would be going, oh my gosh, I don't have, my sleeves are never going to fit around But I arms. knew that how, <laughs> yeah. I mean, this, I'm not kidding, the cardigan, as I'm knitting it, I'm like, oh my God, is that thing going to fit me? So I blocked it aggressively and, you know, with ribbing, it just, I did pin it and I'm going to do the same thing with sleeves. I, or I may wrap a towel around a pool noodle when it's wet and stuff it down in there to stretch it to the width that I desire. But it, it's amazing how it blocks out. I've got a pair of camel colored dress pants that I just think this will look really nice with. So hopefully I'll have this done in the next few days and 
get it blocked and all the things. Okay, yeah, do you have another whip? It. Yeah, thank you. Um, I do have one more whip, but I haven't done anything on it since before last time. And it, it's still the uh, Kylie pullover. Oh, yeah. And I know you guys have seen it, and I'm sorry, I'm gonna show it again. That's okay, <laughs> we love seeing that. Mm -hmm. Mm. And so I just need to pick up the stitches on the other side and start. But, oh man, I just, I know I've talked about it before, but this is just so gorgeous. And I love, 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 love this yarn, so, which happens to be the uh, Pearl Soho Serif, or Serif, I'm not sure. I think and 100% Pima cotton. And it's got a nice little texture to it. And it is, it really feels, I never would have, I would never guess this was cotton. Yeah, it feels more oh, silk, like it silk. doesn't feel, yeah. It is so just silky. Silk, it's like, yeah, it's lovely. So hopefully I'll make some progress on this before the next time we get together. Yeah, now's the time to work on cables. Like oh, it's I know, cable. I know. Mm -hmm. like and these cable are time. Six, cable weather. <gasps> three by threes, I think. Yeah, one, two, three. Yeah, they're three by threes. So, yeah, I love it. So I really kind of want to get it done for Christmas because it'll just be something you put over something else. Oh. That'll be so yeah. gorgeous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, with some nice slacks. Mm -hmm. That'll be really cool. I love it. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> so that's all I have, actually. I think Janet's got another whip. I do. I have two more. <clears throat> so the first one I have is The Core by Natasha Hornby. And here we are. The yarn. Oh, yeah. I know. She's got <clears throat> such gorgeous yarn. So, this is what it looks like so far. Wow. It is a cardigan. And it's made with this beautiful yarn. It's from Simply Socks Yarn Company. And it is Colossal Sock. And the colorway is Pino. So it kind of has yeah. all these pretty colors, but it's it's dark, but it's got all these light colors in it. And so it's really pretty. It so is gorgeous. Yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm working on this thing and one what? side is longer than the other side. <laughs> so like do, do I rip it out and, and start over, or do, counted, do I just continue? Have you counted stitches? How many? Well, are you work it in a certain manner, so you do one section. Is this your back neck? Yeah, this is the back neck. And so it goes, it goes this, this way around your shoulders, right? And this is the collar? Right. That's just going to be beautiful. Right, so this is the top. Yeah, you're right. This is the top. This is the bottom part. Okay. Oh. I just couldn't figure out what you so, were. <laughs> but it's really kind of in the back of the sweater. Yeah, that's the back collar. Wow. That is gorgeous. Yeah. So, it's not quite symmetrical, though. So really? I can't tell. One side's longer than the other. So, are you just going to keep going? I don't know. I'm, I haven't decided. <laughs> Let's look at it later. In, the, in and so, I wanted and... the ladies to look at it before I rip this part out again. Oh, no. So, we'll see. But, making progress, it may go away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. So, wow. That's the core, though. That's it's really bummer. pretty. Yeah. It is. It's really. You know, the funny thing is, is when you said you were going to make that, that has been one of my favorites since I started knitting, I think. You yeah. know, so mm -hmm. it's so cool that you're knitting it. <clears throat> I might have to at some point. Some point. All right. So while we were at Rhinebeck, Melissa decided that she really loved our pressed flowers. She had one too. We all were wearing them. And she really wanted to make a vest. So I told her I would make a vest with her and 
I do, you know, like Claudia said, everybody else was kind of done when they were done. And when I was done, I said, geez, I really enjoyed that. I would make another. So we looked and we looked and we finally found some yarn that we thought would be appropriate. And I know that I pulled the app up, the Ravelry app, and looked to see um, like how many yards the best took. And so we were on a mission and I, she said, hey, what if we do a light background? Because all of ours were dark backgrounds with bright colored flowers. She goes, what if we reverse that and do a light background? and do um you know like a medium tone color and i said okay fine so i found this gorgeous yellow color and it's not coming across it's kind of blowing out it's way more golden it's like strange. more honey colored maybe than it's, it's okay. showing but it's jmr studio and it's an organic, 100% organic, non-super wash merino, a DK slash sport weight, which I would concur. And it's, uh, the color is GS, CHA, like C-H-A, and then A-G. So I think that what they did for the color is put the dye code, code in on, on the label, so it doesn't mean anything to us, but it certainly does to them. And then at a different booth, I found this gorgeous greens and blues and golds with pops of orange. And this is from American U Yarn. Here's the other side of their label. And I don't know if this actually has a colorway. Ah, it does. It's Monet's Bridge, which um, we've been to oh. Monet Gardens, and honestly, that does look like uh -huh. the water lilies. That's pretty. It's not. Oh, I gotta cover up Janet's face. There we go. <laughs> now it's getting it all. I didn't realize that until just now, but yep, now that you're looking at it, that is clearly what that is. So this is 113 grams at 298 yards. So I get home and I pull up the pressed flowers vest pattern and it takes like twice as much yarn as what we purchased. And we're home now and Rhinebeck's over and... So now what? So what I did was I am giving credit to two designers for this. Amy Christoffers for the Pressed Flowers Vest. Picture here. And Sandy Rosner for the number 10 Argyle. Picture here. I made the number 10 Argyle last year, the year before, in a navy... Uh, new to in yarn held with a navy mohair and I love that vest and the way it fits so I'm kind of doing a mesh up of two different patterns so we've got the pressed flowers pattern the chart the body chart that we used for the pressed flowers pullover that we all knit and then you know what it's still Back here maybe is a little bit better. Uh -huh. It's coming across, I think, better. Um, but you can see how nice that looks. Um, what I had to do, I took the stitch count from the 10 Argyle and I needed to add two stitches. No, I'm, am I lying? I added four stitches to it because it's two by two rib to get enough stitches for the chart to work out just right on it. So, it has this right up the middle and I'm gonna try to set it up so that where the v-neck is on the vest if that's not directly underneath of it hopefully there it's the row below you know the section below and then there'll be one on each side and maybe it'll work out so that there's at least one up in 
uh -huh. the skinny part of the V or a half of one or something. So I'm doing it and trying to do it ahead of Melissa so she doesn't have to think about the planning of the placement of those yeah. when we get up to that. So this is just, I'm enjoying this so much. I love this pattern. I can't hardly put it down, but feel how soft that is. So you notice that it's fluffy. Mm -hmm. I, in order to get gauge for the number 10 Argyle, so I would have enough yarn. She's got it all messed up here. Well, I <laughs> all do. This yarn, all this yarn. Um, I had some roving acres. It is nice. Um, mm -hmm. Kid Silk Select lace weight in my stash. And so this is a just a beautiful um, silk mohair, 72 kids silk, 28 silk. Oh, it's okay. You don't have to all mess with it. It'll get, it's <laughs> gonna get all tangled again when I stuff it in the bag. And then this is Pearl Soho's mohair. Mm. No, I'm lying, it's Shibui. Lying, sorry, didn't mean to lie to you. This is Shibui before they went out of business. The first, well, when we thought that they were going completely out of business. Um, this is their silk mohair and the colorway is trellis. So this is from my stash as well. And so all it's doing is just adding enough that I can get gauge. So this is a, I think a 17 stitch gauge which is way bigger than what the Press Flowers vest is. I think that one's 20 or something. But um, more to come. Hopefully, I'll just keep going on it and you'll be able to see it finished soon because I'm anxious to see it finished soon. Also, it's like the perfect time to wear a vest, don't you think? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so do you have another? Yes, I do. So when we were in Rhinebeck, I bought this beautiful yarn that was the um, the yarn for the festival. Oh, right. And it was called, what was it called? Good green. It was called, oh, it was Destination Yarn, Rain in the Catskills. And I just fell in love with that yarn. Here it is, here they are, right there. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's exactly. Well, this is um, Jean, okay. the owner, and oh, Dyer, right. it's right. her card. So, he, yeah, so Destination Yarn, and this is DK Weight, and Rain in the Catskills, and Here's what this beautiful yarn looks like. So, I wanted to make something with just the one skein, and Tammy had mentioned a beautiful, the beautiful cow that she had made. I, I really wanted to make that, which is called Icing on the Cake Cow by Beth McDonald Stone. So I started that when we were in Rhinebeck, and this is as far as I've gotten so far. Just a little bit. I haven't worked on it since, but, oh, love it. That's gorgeous. So I, I am not doing all of the little, the crisscrosses. The cables. The cables. And just because I have so, there's so much different, variation in all the colors that I don't think that you'd be able to see them anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's just going to be plain stockinette through the majority here. It's so, gorgeous. It's just so pretty. So I bought that yarn. So, you bought that yarn. Melissa bought that yarn. Did Terry get one? No. I don't think so. She so, bought, she did buy some yarn from Destination, but she got a different, um, I think that's yours. Color. Yes. So she, she did, she got a different color, so. Nice. So pretty. Yeah. Do you have anything else? Um, I ha no, not, not that I'm gonna show today. I have something that I started recently, um, but mostly I think we should 
kind of talk a little bit about some of the yarns that we saw. Oh, and that we bought. That we bought, <laughs> things that we are planning or not planning with them. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> some of our acquisitions and gifts. Okay, we can do that. So, uh, when we were in at Cake Palooza, <laughs> Janet and I came up to the booth for Cape May Fiber Company, and they had a sweater out, uh, the Ursa sweater, and they had used it, this this yarn, and it's a it's called Surrey Silk chunk so it's 90 percent surrey alpaca 10 percent silk and it's a i guess the sweater is a large gauge so you don't need a whole lot of it so i mean i just saw this and i you know i was really going to try to be really good but i had to have this because it's just so gorgeous yeah so whether I, uh, I'm planning on the Ursa, but if not, it'll be something with a, a looser gauge because I only have three of these, so that's like 600. This is uh, 246 yards, so that's like 750, mm -hmm. about. And this colorway is called Cream uh, Queen Victoria. It's gorgeous. And mm -hmm. it is as soft as you can imagine. It is yeah. Soft. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Crazy yeah. soft. So... I'm excited about that, and yeah, I was really did, really did pretty well this time because mm -hmm. I didn't overbuy. And then when I was at Cake Palooza, woohoo, that's gorgeous! Oh, I bought this beautiful, beautiful coffee mug, the lid on it, pottery mm -hmm. with the sheep on it. Oh, <clears throat> so this was from Golden Earth Designs, and they had just so many beautiful cool. pottery pieces and I also bought they had uh, yarn birds Robin from yarn birds was there and they had a couple people from magpie fibers were also there and so I bought this nest worsted and the colorway careless whisper and that's what these buttons are going to go with. oh that'll be pretty so I'm gonna make the moccasin by Thea Coleman and use a couple of these buttons for that and um, this is the same yarn that she used on the sweater she had mm -hmm. that she was wearing at Rhinebeck so um, I'm anxious to start that pattern oh as my well. goodness yeah Wow. So I also was at the Cape May Fiber booth and really fell in love with the Rune Charm mitts and they had a tiny little kit for these and then uh, there was a coupon code to download those from the website. So that was one purchase there. Another was I got the same yarn that Janet did, and um, I it's their show colorway, and yeah. I initially had a plan, and my plan has since gone sideways. Um, this is Destination Yarn. I was gonna make the same cowl with the girls, but I, I'm going to show you this again in a hot second because I think that it's going to be used for a second one of the um, cinnamon and bourbons. But while we were there, Hobby, who you've heard us talk about so many times on our podcast because we love so many of their yarns, they were back in the back and they had, there were representatives there and they had a wheel that you could spin and if you landed on different things you either won something or you want a discount code or these really cute um, stickers and I won two skeins of this amazing yarn that I cannot wait I'll do these side by side to block their faces but it's the happy place yarn 
This is 65% alpaca, 28% polyamide, and 7% wool. These beauties are a super bulky and they're 50 grams each. I intend to hold, not hold them together, but to do color work. And I'm thinking like a color work cowl. I think that would just be so uh -huh, beautiful. Uh -huh. You know, maybe the gray is the background. And I may have to, because I've only got one skein of each, um, do top or bottom ribbing with this color and the color work with this and then the other ribbing with this color just to get it tall enough. But I, there, that may very well be enough for whatever, mm -hmm. depending on how much color work. And I haven't picked a pattern yet, but they were so much fun. We actually got a picture with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I actually want some too. I didn't show that earlier, but at this pretty blue color. You had two skeins of that, right? Right. It is so, so. soft. It is like so it's incredibly soft. soft. And it's like a blown yarn. I think mm -hmm. the polyamide might, might be um, the, core, the, core. the thing that holds the um, blown alpaca and wool. But it is, it kind of reminds me of, what is that one? Drops air. Yeah. It's, it reminds me a lot of that, except the price point, I think, might be better. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, um, This was from there, or no? I don't know. I think it might be. Um, I think so. I think that I got this wonderful lotion cream also there. The Rose Field. I'm just looking real quick on the map that I will have. I feel like it was from there because I think Melissa got some that day as well. And I just can't. Mm, I don't remember. I might have bought it there or someplace else because, you know, we were high on yarn fumes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... You I just have two more. Move on to I the next well, day. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So let's see. This is from a, a Loop Fiber Studio. And this is Yin Yang Yarn. <laughs> Yin Yang Yarn. <laughs> it's 100% Merino. Um, and it is worsted weight. And they had a, a sale. They were they were getting rid of this colorway and it was $14. So I had to buy it. <laughs> yeah. And it, I'm, I think, you know what? Let me pull this out because to me, it reminds me a lot of the red poppy I'm using. Well, it's really, it's close. It's very, poppy's a little brighter. Yeah, the poppy's a little bit brighter, but it's a, it's more of an orangey red than a red red. The color value is about the same. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't, you know, I bought some of this last year and I never used it, haven't used it yet. <laughs> that was so bad. I haven't either, but I, I fondle it every time I sit in front of my worsted wool cabinet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I bought this. It's alpaca. It's from Burgess Brook and it's 100% alpaca and the colorway is called Lady Gaga. It's uh, hopefully it's not blowing out too bad but it's a very light yellow. Which It's I, kind of a buttery yellow isn't it? It is. Yeah. A light butter. Light butter. But it's, it's really soft. And I was thinking of using it to make that. Oh, that would be good. Like yeah. for the, the stripes and yep. the lips. Yep. You know, I can't remember how many yards. It did not take many yards Yeah. for um, these stripes. And yeah, well, I was thinking a navy blue Ooh, with this. So. Yeah, that'd be pretty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's all I have. I was actually. And I only have got only about two skeins of this, and I think I have six skeins of this, mm -hmm. <laughs> and three skeins of this. Well, <laughs> sweaters quantity, man. You gotta, man, you gotta, gotta, gotta do it. it. Gotta do it. Yeah, it's like you buy it and you walk away, and you don't have it anymore, and it may not be available. Right. So. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. Hence the Frankenstein pressed flowers vest. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> So Janet, you have a you have pile so, over yeah, there. So yeah, <clears throat> so so in Rhinebeck, um, the yarn hero. Of course, I've used yarn hero for other things that I've knitted, and they had this stipple DK that they are discontinuing, and I have several skeins of the stipple DK in a different color. This one is called Baby Cakes. So I did buy two skeins of this and I have what's called Movie Theater, which has blues and purple and has a little bit of this oranges and yellow. It's, it's, I think. It, it's got a variety of little colors and it's also the stipple. So it's gonna be, so I think these two together and something that has some sort of, like some stripes, some pattern in there. I think this is going to be really pretty for that. Mm -hmm. So I bought that. And then, on the <laughs> last day, I had met a couple of our viewers, Annie and... Uh, oh, good grief. No, I'm forgetting. Annie and Sherry. And... Um, we were both, we were all, all three of us were in a booth. We were all looking at the same sweater, which was the cinnamon and bourbon. And they had a, um, a test knit there that was just gorgeous. And we fell in love with it. And they had, they, they only had one skein of this color. This is called the Purple Finch. And... Um, it was in lot two, which they had at the store. So both Annie and I both decided we were going to make the same sweater. So I'm going to be knitting this. This is called the Morning Dove. And this is the Indian Pipe. So it is the Hudson Valley Fibers. And it is a New York... Um, dyed yarn and it's, it's just produced there. It's so beautiful. Okay, so you have three colors. Is the darker color going to be your background? Yes. This and one's then gonna one be of the them background. is the, the plain stripes? Right. And then something else is going to be the blues? No. Actually, the white is going to be the white places that you have and then there's going to be the... It was These were the, uh, the um, test knitters knit these stripes in between in a different color. Okay. And the blues so, in a color. Okay. okay. So. Wow. That's gorgeous. It's going to be gorgeous. I feel like you've got a theme. Grab that other skein. <laughs> Look at, like, mm -hmm. your whole theme for colors is really, like, you could almost it all put goes all your together. together and it would make something gorgeous. Mm -hmm. That was a very cohesive mindset. Very pretty. That's gorgeous. So pretty. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. Wow. So. That's oh. exciting. So did you end up ordering, which one of those colors did you order more of? All of, I, the, these I ordered all online. So I called and she, she sent them. They were oh, you're, just you already have them? Uh-huh. She did, like, send them right away. Boom. Holy moly. I mean, it was amazing. Two days, I got them. Awesome. So oh, I and you got the right, the correct, all the, the, um, because you were concerned right. about the She had the, number, right? the correct color at the shop that we wanted. So Pretty. it was beautiful. That's crazy. So you just called beautiful. her last Tuesday, and today's only Wednesday, and you've had that stuff already. Yeah, today's Monday. Oh, yeah. Oh, Monday. I got it. Right, Monday. <laughs> got it. Sorry. I got it Thursday. <laughs> right. It was two days. But yes. She said she was going to put it in the mail and have it to me. Wow. So awesome. very sweet. Man, that's some good service right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I have a, t a little bit of a haul. So I got the same yin yang worsted as Claudia, 
and I think that I plan on, I've got some gray, like a charcoal gray, and you can probably see, there you go, that background color in here is kind of a taupey, yeah. sort of a taupey color, and I think that the yin, the yin to a jang or the yang to a jin was kind of a greenish color, but in this, I feel like it looks taupey enough that I could hold that with like a gray and do something to where it makes sense. Um, and then Saw Kill Farm. Oh my goodness. You know, this is a sport weight yarn, which, okay, I said this sweater is DK weight. I know that some of the testers use DK and I know you could get gauge with that. I use sport and the Saw Kill Farm is a sport weight. So maybe they had this in sport and DK and worsted and I picked the sport because I knew mm -hmm. I could get gauge. Yes, they did. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So yes. this may very well be my second cinnamon and bourbon. And I don't know exactly what color I'm going to use with this. But I'm kind of thinking, now that I've seen these two together, I'm going to have to oh, knit a swatch. Yeah. The rust in here might be too matchy-matchy, and I don't want it to get muddy. But if I, I'm going to try a little swatch and see, since I've already obviously got the pattern. And then I bought five skeins of this mystery yarn. And I know at the time I knew what it was, but there's no tag on it. I can't tell you who I bought it from. Um, but I can tell you by the drape that it's alpaca. <laughs> I mean, it's, it will not, it's gotta be alpaca. Just, and maybe some silk. Uh, but it's weird that there is no tag on any of it. Yeah, I may have to look for my receipt and call and like send them a picture and go, okay, what did I buy here? Uh, but I have five skeins of it, I believe. And then just before Rhinebeck, Janet made a Magpie Fibers purchase of the nest. And I have had, like Claudia said, what was the yarn that you had from last year that has, um, it's a striping, a self-striping? Oh, the unit. The, it's uh, from... Utopia. Yeah, Felix. Utopia yarn. I have got some Utopia yarn that I've been looking for something to put with it. And this is called Midnight Natural. And it looks like a really rich brown, black, kind of a heathered. Oh, it's gorgeous. And I'm thinking that I may do some color work with that yarn and this together. And then I got some tough woolens because I see them everywhere. They're actually in Ohio. Um, I got the sugar skull, but I've always wanted to try this. And finally, I was someplace where I could get into the booth and purchase it. But man, you can smell that. It's like, oh wow, isn't that so? Like mm, the whole smells room lovely. smells delicious. Um, yeah, so I've never tried it, but I am excited to use it as a wool wash for all woolens because it says you just lather it under the water and soak and do it just like uh, any other. And then I did get from Utopia a the Inspire Mittens by Catherine Ashley Wright. I got the pattern for that and it's actually in this little booklet. Cool. So, wowza. I mean, we ended up with some amazing things. Yeah, it was just did. like, it, it just, you turn a corner and you just see another person you knew. Yeah, it was fun. We was ran really into fun. podcasters and viewers, and thank you all for, if you came up to us, because of course, we don't know what you look like. <laughs> uh, it was so wonderful to see all the people that, or a lot of people that we saw last year. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah. Then new people this year. Yeah. yeah. And then I feel like I've made friends, and I, I just love it. I love it's it, too. Yeah. It's so exciting. I mean, everybody feels like a friend, but... Yeah, it Some is. more than others. Yeah, so it's we actually exchanged phone numbers with a couple of people. Um, 
Yeah. Which is really, it's, it'll be easy or mm -hmm. to keep in touch, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. And the funny thing is, is this happened to us last year too. We were um, coming back from Rhinebeck and we stopped at a, a rest stop. Yep. And I had my pressed flowers cardigan on and I walk out of the bathroom and this one lady says, oh, that's a beautiful pressed flowers. And I said, oh, you're coming for right back, are you? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, yes, we are. And then one of the other ladies says, you look really familiar. And I said, oh, you probably saw us at the, you know, somewhere along the way. And she goes, she just kept going, I know, uh, you look really familiar. You guys have a podcast? Oh. And I said, yes, we do. And she was so excited and, you know, to meet us. And so, of course, we had to have get a picture with her. She right, was right. really cute. But we'd asked mm -hmm. her before and she went in to take our picture. And she was going to stop and take our picture anyway. And then she saw you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was so funny. So knitters are some really sweet people. Yeah. And I, don't, mm -hmm. I asked her her name, but I can't remember. And I'm sorry, but... It was a really a nice stop, you know. Yeah, it was. It was. It was so, such a surprise. Yeah, makes us feel really good. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like wow, we may, maybe we're making an impact somehow. <laughs> right, yes, right. Yeah, it's just knitting, but that's okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's something. And I was thrilled to meet. Finally, got to meet Beth McDonald's Beth McDonald Stone in person, who I've tested it for a bunch. Thea Coleman in person, finally. Um, I'm trying to think, did we run into any other designers? Oh, I'm sure we did, but cause you I know, know, everything starts to kind of, yeah. it's, it just gets off blurry around the edges uh -huh. and fuzzy. Yeah. What's your name? Alex? Designer. Yeah. Uh, I tried she to has bring some beautiful cards. patterns. Yeah. It seems like, yeah, I know who you're talking something. about. Last, yeah, she goes by something glass. Yes, that's it right. It was Alex. Was yeah, it, when, that, that was Alex her first was name. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. But I just couldn't remember for sure if right. that's what it is or not. So. Yeah, she was with Thea, right? Yes. Wearing her gorgeous sweater that she had knit. That was beautiful. Yeah, it would have been so good for you to run into Skaney Dippin. Oh, I when know. When you had that sweater on. I know, but... She probably would have I been wanted, thrilled to I, see somebody wearing it. I wanted to wear it on the coldest day because I was afraid it, the next day would be, it might be too warm because that's a nice warm sweater. Yeah. yeah. We saw Claudia Quintanilla. Yes, yes, we did. Yeah. She's so sweet. Oh, yeah, my she, gosh. She yeah. came out with this new book. and Oh, my goodness. The patterns yeah, with all the rhinestones. With oh, all the my little gosh. pretty sparkly oh, stuff. Yeah. I, her yeah. stuff oh, was awesome. It was beautiful. So beautiful. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And she was, it, the book is Memory Lane. We don't have a copy mm -hmm. of it, but boy, oh boy, I'm really tempted to get a copy. Um, she gave us all a postcard, and here's a picture of one of the sweaters on the front of the postcard. Isn't that gorgeous? Those are, all of them had embellishes, like Janet was saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with beads and beautiful um, glittery. Mm -hmm threads uh -huh. oh just so right. lovely yeah so we're really anxious we may do a knit along with her at some point later in the year like next year because <laughs> yeah. we're getting a little close to christmas time and holiday knitting and gift knitting and things now so but yeah nice. if you haven't joined in there is a little over a month left on the letho cow knit along uh-huh it'll right. probably take me the whole month <laughs> Before I can really? finish mine. No, mm -hmm. yeah, you'll get we'll it see. Done a little faster than you think. <laughs> You've got a lot of whips. I so. may pick up speed, I don't know. But yes, I got a lot of things going on. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I guess right. I guess we go to the tasting table. All righty. So, so our back. wine today is the Justin Right Angle 2021. And it is, we have been to Justin a few years ago in Paso Robles and love the winery. It's just a, a wonderful winery to go to. Their wines are absolutely delicious. They have several angle wines, which this one is the right angle. 
and it is a $40 wine, so it's not real expensive, but it is a delicious Bordeaux blend. And it has a, like a 77% of Cabernet Sauvignon, has some uh, Petit Syrah, Petit Verdot, and Malbec. And um, it is another one of our very bold wines. <laughs> um, more, a little more on the tannic side, a little more dry, a little more acidic. It's like got a lot of dark fruits. Um, oak, vanilla, tobacco, blackberry, plums, cherries, raspberries. Um, so it's just, it's a really lovely wine. Mm -hmm. It's, um, the nose fruit, on it's really good. Yeah. Very fruit forward. Mm -hmm. That's right. Really a nice finish. Mm -hmm. All the things and you want. Yeah. For all, for this being a delicious Bordeaux blend, the price point is really nice mm -hmm. on this wine. I mm -hmm. highly recommend it. It's a lot of red fruit. Mm -hmm. Is that what it says? Maybe tobacco. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely mm -hmm. smoke. I get smoke. Yeah. So this winery started in 1981, and it's really it's really done well. Their their main wines are their Bordeaux, and then they have all like your your single varietals as well. And just really good. So. The app, somebody had asked us uh, on our um, podcast what we use, and it's called Vivino. And um, we'll put that in the show notes so that you can see. So that's what we traditionally go to when we um, look up a wine. And it kind of it gives you a rating. Like this one was a 4.2 mm -hmm. rating out of 5. And um, so it's kind of a nice little app to go in and look. Look yeah. up the wines, look up the price points. Yeah, um, it tells you also if they're available see. anywhere. Right. Which is and really you, nice. You right. can buy them right through the app. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's a, it's a nice little app. Yeah. So did I guess it so, right when it's I said tobacco? and? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Red fruit. But, yeah. yeah, all of those points were definitely mentioned. Yep, no kidding. That's delicious. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. a good one. That is a really good price point for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's yummy. Well, and it's a young, younger wine as well. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's nice. Yeah, it could lay down for a bit. It absolutely. Yeah, it could withstand <clears throat> that. I think we've had some of the older bottles, haven't we? Mm -hmm. We have. Mm -hmm. Well, so we had we had an isosceles on here. I, I know that we yeah. showcased that probably a year or two ago, and that's some really good wine. Yeah. 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 Another Bordeaux blend. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's nice that this um, <laughs> that this is available because sometimes we show stuff that's not available. You can't get anymore. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, some of the bottles are so old that right. they're you just can't because there aren't that many. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're in somebody's cellar or they're already long ago consumed. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So that's one thing that I was kind of surprised about at Rhinebeck. People were coming up and saying, oh, I'd love to see what you're drinking now. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, right. it's nice to know people do uh, do show interest uh -huh. in the wines that we share. Yeah. And so... And yeah. it's hilarious. Mm -hmm. So because there were five of us this year, mm -hmm. we had... Um, we needed to pull a U-Haul trailer <laughs> behind us for all of our things, you know, because we stay at an Airbnb, so we take food and wine and Alcohol. other whatever, other cocktail, <laughs> all our luggage, fix things we want and all of our things that we're knitting on and, you know, everything you're going to need for the weekend, games, um, all the things. And people were like, oh my gosh, did you bring a U-Haul for all the wine? <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah. Somebody thought we had it was full of yarn. We're like, no, sorry no. to disappoint. Yeah, they thought we we might be um, uh, selling selling, selling yarn, yarn. Yeah. but we weren't. Oh, 
But we ran into and like briefly met so many amazing uh-huh. people uh-huh. who I know if they lived close, they would be considered really good friends, right? Yes. yes. We yes. just... Oh gosh, it was just a wonderful experience. Yeah. And now, who were those? Met two? so many wonderful people. Oh, and I was yeah. just so right, right. so wonderful. And we are yeah. looking forward to getting together with Kelly and Noel from Knits and Pieces at some point over the next several months because you know they just live over the border in Canada, like across the lake from Michigan, and you know we're just four hours south of that, so. Uh-huh. We're going to try and figure out some point where we can get together and hang out and knit with them because they're just a couple mm-hmm. of beautiful, wonderful ladies mm-hmm. that we've enjoyed. We got to meet them for the first time last year, and you know, we've been chatting back and forth through our podcasts for longer than that. And it was just nice to see them again and get a mm-hmm. hug. And mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. But. Okay, so we're gonna share with you a lot of the pictures that yeah that were taken while we were there, and thank you all so much for watching. Yes, and we're all here for you. Yep, we yes. are. So until <laughs> next time, yes. if, if you can't, can't be with, with the wine you love, love the wine you're with. Cheers. Cheers.